Cockpit Review Season 2, Episode 2. Let's go! Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. With Game Glass, you can take control of your ship using a tablet or a phone. You can try it out using some of the free pre made shots, or you can also make your own custom shots and share them with the community through the built in marketplace. So, gone are the days where you have no more room for all your key bindings. On top of that, Game Glass also supports Star Citizen. So, follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free, and use offer code DTEA to get 5% off any purchase. We're gonna start this episode out with a card quit from. Uh, I don't even have a name. It is from David. Um, so we have got David's home cockpit here. First thing I notice is the uh, is the track RR up there on top of the screen. I think yeah, there's the cap. You can see the cap there with the reflective markers. Put that on your head. That thing tracks them, and then you have head tracking. Simple as that. Also like props for the Ferengi uh, <laughs> pen holder. I like that. Okay, let's like let's, let's dive into his actual uh, flight equipment here. So he actually writes all the stuff that he's using, making my life a lot easier here. So the the throttle, the stick, and the pedal is actually a combined set from it's called the CH Pro throttle stick and pedals. Not familiar with it. Looks like there's a decent selection of hat switches. I'm not sure. They look all to be digital hats. I'm not sure. Really nothing on the base. Don't know what's behind it. And then on the back side, maybe we can see that later. And similar over here, plenty of hats, some buttons, like some triggers on the back of this, and um, and then pedals down there. So you have all the axes that you need for your flight needs. I would guess a stick like this likely doesn't have twists, which I guess is why the pedals uh, pedals are there. One thing he's using is he's using this, which I think is the Racer Taravus Legion version two. I think that's it. And he says he uses this for for on foot and ground gameplay, which actually makes a lot of sense. I've seen a lot of people use these. And I always just assumed it was for macro keys. When you think about it, the, the actual purpose is, I guess, FPS game where you, you put your hand on there and you have basically like your double your ASD kind of layout, and then you have plenty of other macro keys around you can use for crouch and swapping weapons and those kind of things. Just like you would use basically just that end of the keyboard. And that means you actually don't have to use your keyboard for on foot, and that means the keyboard can be as he has here, just kind of propped it up against the monitor, so that is like like that, and you only have to use it when you actually need to write a system name or types of thing in chat or stuff like that, right? So, so the keyboard really becomes a secondary thing. We all know that we play elite, like like getting room for both your throttle and your stick and and, and your keyboard and your mouse, and for all the different game modes, where you both want to have something for driving, for 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 walking and for flying, you're gonna need a lot of space, and it can be quite quite uh, cluttered. Oh, we got it from the side. Okay, so we can see here there is a number of buttons. So there's another hat back there and, and three buttons. And on the stick we have a we have a trigger there and a pinky button down there. I was wondering what it was on his chair, but it looks like it's a uh, it's a battery powered light. He probably put that in there so we could actually see what was under the desk. Very nice. I like when people make it a little bit easier to see what's in the, the dark corners. <laughs> So this looks like some kind of plate that he is basically just clamped onto his desk, so it might not be... Uh, I'm not sure if he uses this as a permanent thing, um, or if... I mean, looking at where his submover and his screen is, I think it's a permanent thing, but maybe when he's not flying spaceships... I don't know. I mean, where would he put his mouse then? I'm not sure. Maybe this is just like this permanently. First of all, that's a very, very serious power brick. Like, oh my god. <laughs> that thing means business. USB on that as well. And that looks like a USB hub back there. Subwoofer. And then we have some uh, Logitech speakers there. Because I was wondering if that was his headset from some of the earlier pictures. But it looks like that's just a mic, basically. I think it has a, a headphone in it, a headset in it. You can. It's like one of those call center things, you know, with just one ear. Um, but I think he just uses that as uh, as his microphone for for voice chats and those kind of things. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love. The, I must have missed the firing extinguisher earlier. Love that, by the way. Just you never know. I mean, if you get too close to a star and everything overheats, it's nice to have a fire extinguisher at hand. We got the PC over here, 2080 Ti, very very beefy. Um, what else does he say here? 64 gigs of memory, Intel i7. Uh, 6850K running at 5.6 gigahertz. Oh, a little space station. That looks like... That's a Star Trek thing, isn't it? Because that looks like the nacelles there. I'm not sure what station this is. Oh my god, wipe's gonna kill me. <laughs> Very nice cockpit. Again, one of these where you really get a lot of usability out of a small amount of space. 
which I, I really like to see those. I mean, if you have a massive room, you can put all the equipment in when you're dealing with, with limited space. Very nice setup. Thanks a lot for sending that in. This is gonna be quite a mouthful. Oh my God. <laughs> Talk about a home cockpit. Okay, so <laughs> let's, let's start from the top here. This is the cockpit of Commander Scooter Nuts. And as he says in his message here, is he plays mainly um, DCS, as you can probably guess from a lot of the flight-specific equipment here. But he also likes to play Elite, where he likes to do trading and exploration. And then he plays Flight Simulator 2020. He has a long list of things. I'm going to keep that over here on the other screen, so I can maybe try to identify some of the equipment here. But first of all, dedicated chair. Not that often we see dedicated flight chairs. I guess these center-mounted. This is, of course, the, um, the Warthog, I think. Yeah, we have the, the, the thrust mount of the Warthog. Um, the throttle's there, the center stick there. And then all of these flight panels. The problem is I'm not sure I can identify all of them. One of the things I can identify, though, is these panels here. Those are from Derek Spear. I know that guy. We've been, we've been sponsoring the channel in the past. And he makes... It's like a guy in the US. He makes the dedicated panels like these that are specifically for flight sim setups. Um, basically like these button boxes. You get a box full of buttons, plug in with USB key, and you have all the buttons, knobs, and dials that you need. But yeah, so those I recognized. And then there are some MFDs, multifunction displays. Again, very, very popular with um, um, with like uh, hardcore flight sim players because they have these... I mean, they match what you have in the game. I mean, judging from uh, from the from this background there, I think he likes flying helicopters, which makes sense. Like, often I think when you see people center mounting their um, their joystick, it is helicopters, often. Um, sometimes you will see also have dedicated, like, lift things out on the side. Not in this case, though. I see some VR equipment out here and some spare sticks. That looks like... Is that a spare... Is that a spare Wolfhawk stick? Looks like it. So I'm just reading through the list here, and I'm just going to try to read it out because I don't know if I can identify all of it. So it has three DDS, that Derek Spear Designs button boxes. Those down there are Thrustmaster MFDs mounted with RAM mounts. So that was probably those. Those are the MFDs. Thrustmaster Boring Throttle and Airbus Throttle. No clue. Thrustmaster Warthog Wind Wing Origin 2 on the way. Okay, so we have the Warthog there and there. Then we have a VKB Mark IV rudders. Those would be down underneath there. We have a honeycomb yoke that are mounted to the keyboard tray using wing nuts. Honeycomb yoke? Keyboard tray? I do not know. I'm lost. I don't know what that is. Two vertical mounted touchscreens. Oh, those are touchscreens. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, I like that. Then the last main monitor. Vive 2 Pro VR. And he only flies VR, he says. Okay, so that even that, that's not even the display that he's using. When he flies, he only flies VR. How do you find your way around all those MFDs in VR? Like, I, I get... I get when you're when you're flying on a screen that all the the monitors and all that stuff, but when you only fly VR, how do you find your way around all of this? I can, the throttles I can guess and, and and that kind of stuff and and the buttons on the hotel or the stick it makes sense too, but I would get lost with all this in VR. Butt kicker. Oh, there's a butt kicker in it too. That means it has like vibration in the seat. All right, let's move on to some of the other pictures here. We get it from another view. There's one of the PCs. I think, he, yeah, so he's running multiple PCs because it says he's also hosting some um, some, some uh, DCS servers. Some of these PCs are running dual duty, double duty, where they both run some of these entertainment screens, the, the touch screens, but they're also like hosting servers and those kind of things for, for actually playing. Oh, there's the headset. Spot the headset. What a cockpit. Wow. <laughs> okay. Call me impressed. I know that I spent a significant amount on, on my home cockpit, but uh, this one, <laughs> like hats off, that's what I call a home cockpit. Thanks a lot again for sending it in. I think one of the most like kitted out hot cockpits that we've seen on this series so far. So awesome, well done. If you thought we kind of peaked <laughs> with the last one, no, 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 <laughs> we're not even done yet. Not only is this guy, like actually built, we're gonna see this in a second. Um, but he actually made a homepage for his 
cockpit. <laughs> like, what? So, as you can see, Undead Parrot Gaming. We on his, his sent his link to his homepage where he basically like documented his whole build process here. Star Citizen Virtual Cockpit Project. Building a virtual home cockpit, simulation cockpit sim pit for space and flight simulator mostly and play Star Citizens. This website has information and details about the, pro the project in the project in progress. So he has a bunch of videos about it on his YouTube channel. We're gonna take a tour. I wanna see this. Okay, so let's zoom in a bit. So we have all the systems back. By the way, if you if you are interested, it is undeadparrot.com. If you want to go and, and because I'm only gonna be able to like take a look at a fraction of this. Oh look at that! <laughs> like that. Okay, I'm gonna have to mute that um, because I'm not sure about the copyright things going on here. Okay, so there was some background music on his uh, on his YouTube videos. Um, I'm not 100% sure about the, the the copyright on that, so I'm just gonna gonna we have, gonna have to skip that if you wanna watch them. Like undeadparrot.com, go check out his homepage or his YouTube channel if you wanna see more that, like that. But we're just gonna take a quick tour here. First of all. There we have a Verpal Constellation Alpha right-hander stick. That is the Verpal Constellation Delta stick in the other hand on a set mount with the Warbird bases. Those I know by heart. Same joystick I use. I know that one I'm looking at. it. This one doesn't have twist. I mean, he doesn't have the twist up and down, if I recall correctly. We see a similar one of these, like, pads over here. One of these, you know, with just the end of a keyboard. We have a... Oh, which one is that? That's the old... Yeah, yeah, that's the old original... Um, uh, the first throttle they came out with. Like, so, so this is the throttle that they sell today. This is the Verbal Mongoose CM3. T, T CM3? T50 CM3, I think. Merkle Mongoose. It's the only throttle they sell at the moment with the whole, like, the, the extra things on the back and stuff like that. That's the one they sell today. But the first one they made was this one, which is this just the Mongoose T50. It was before they added these things on the back. The base is a lot bigger, a lot more buttons on the base itself. Um, and it's also a lot heavier. But that was the first original model. They don't sell this anymore. And to my in my opinion, this is still the best throttle that Verbal ever made. Okay, other than that, he has a also a Verbal Control Panel 1 and a Verbal Control Panel 2. Not sure where that center thing is. But what we have here looks like, yeah, that is game glass. So my guess is that this is, again, we could probably go in and figure it out, but I guess this is like a, like a touch screen maybe that he can have, basically has, looks like three separate shots, probably custom make them, but you can make your own shots now in the, um, with game glass, it's super nice. So you can make these shots and they're basically like, you have a touch screen and then you can bind key bindings to those buttons you make on the touch screen, like those panels. And that means you can just control things. So he has his power triangle for Star Citizen here. And he has probably like uh, powering on different modules here, moving pips around, those kind of things. Toby Eye Tracker um, sitting up here. We can see the lights from it. Very distinct with those uh, light distributions. And then just curved monitors all around. Um, and I like to look at that, they actually been held up by wires because they're probably too heavy for the stand, so they're being tied up for something there on the top. And then a monitor on the top, we can see he's running Discord at the moment, so this is probably for content consumption, um, Discord, and watching YouTube videos while you play. But you still get that, like, I mean, he has a good, that's more than 45, like, that's probably, that's also more than 90, actually, that's probably like 120 degrees field of view, something like that. Look at that, that is actually a power. You put the key in and turn it to power the whole thing on. Oh, okay, so this is where he has the power con power control for the ship. So what, does he have this one up here? So this one system's ready. So that means flip that up and that turns on all power on your ship. You can turn on and off all power there, weapons, assist, uh, shield and throttles. Mouse wise, not sure exactly what mouse that is, but he is running it on a power mat which is like the Logitech's um, induction plate. So you put, so what you do is you put like a little special thing in where there would usually be room for like extra weights in the mouse. And then instead of you having to charge the mouse, it just sits on the mouse pad and then it inducts um, power into it and then it charges the mouse like that. We get a good view of the other side here again. We get that stick there on the C mount. Oh, we also have throttle paddles in there. We see those. I think that's also, I'm not sure if that's the purple one, I think it is, but also pedals in there. I think that's the exact same thing as we saw, it's also the racer, so it's exactly the same thing as we saw before. With buttons, little scroll wheel there, four-way hat and a button and a thumb button there. 
Now we get a better view of the, of the purple here. As I said, Mongoose T50. Really, really nice throttle. I love that one. And we have a top-down view of the whole thing from... Uh, as I said, I, I probably only covered like a fraction of this. And if you want to see the like full development and watch some of the channels of this, like go check it out. Like, as I said, undeadparrot.com. Go like have a look at it if you want to see more details about it. If you're wondering how he did specific things, how he set it up, then I'm pretty sure he explains it in some of his, uh, his YouTube videos. Thanks a lot for, for showing this to me. Um, I said that the last one we watched was probably the most over the top that I've seen so far. Uh, this one might take, the, might over, overdo that I'll just, just a tad. <laughs> Some very, very awesome home cockpit. But finally, if you want your cockpit showcased on a future episode of Cockpit Review, then do send them in to me. It doesn't have to be these over-the-top cockpits. I love to see these where people let's just make do with the space they have and, and maybe are playing within a budget or something like that. Love to see those too because I know a lot of you guys watching out there use these videos for inspirations for your own home, home cockpits. And while stuff like this is amazing to see, realistically, a lot of us will not have a spare room we can build into a spaceship. <laughs> so therefore, seeing these compact cockpits, something I really, really like to see as well. So it doesn't matter how over the top it is, send it to me. Either get a hold of me on Discord or send it to me at downtoearthastronomy at gmail.com. That's good for this week. Thanks a lot for watching and also next time. I'll see you guys in space.